Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So this has been a highly requested video. This is how I organize, catalog and store my stamps. So let's go ahead and have a look. All right, so you would have seen a little while ago, I can't remember how long exactly, um, I got a bunch of brand new lawn fawn. It's still all sitting here on my desk, which means I need to put it away. This is my new system of how I organize, catalog, and store my stamps. So I'm gonna run you through this from arriving on my desk to being put away in my drawer. So these are the new parts, and this is highly, highly influenced by my lovely friend Simone, who she does this, something very similar to this, um, and she inspired me to do it myself. I'm so in debt to her because this has come in handy already like a bazillion times and I've only had this going for like a month. So I'm just, I'm so indebted to her for the idea and for encouraging me to actually do it because it felt like such a huge project. This is, this is my entire collection of stamps and you'll see in a minute what I've got and how it all works and everything. But this is, that's, that's a lot of stamps and I thought doing the catalogues would take me so long and it did, it took me a long time. But the investment, it's, it's an investment in it because now it's so easy to do. Well, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. So, all these are, these are cardstock, discs, and this is a, a, a cover I've made just out of a uh, blending card. I just stamped them out. So I'll show you, not through it, because not really that exciting, um, but exactly sort of how I did this. So this is, I'll show you, the, I'll show you both of the covers. So I just stamped out a bunch of my favorite images front and back, colored them in. It was actually a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to sit here and color. Just for me, I don't color in my stamps images a lot for myself. I tend to do them and then give them to other people. So I just, I loved playing with this. It was a lot of, it, it really was a lot of fun. So there you go, you can see all of the love that little chameleon. I forgot how much I loved that chameleon. And it let me play with colors I don't usually play with. Like I would never have mixed teal and green, but now I love it. And now I need to make a card like that. Uh, and then I have used disc bound for this. The reason I've used discs, number one, I had discs, there you go. Um, but it's very easy to add to it, which is kind of the point. So it is very, very, very simple to add to this. Oh, sorry, reversing. All I did then was just added, this is just a, a cutout, just says lawn for nothing fancy, just as a nameplate. Um, I just put, I originally just wanted this all in one book, it was too big. So this is my A to M and this is my N to Z, it's the only difference. Um, and then I've just laminated it, just an A5 laminating pocket, nothing hard. And then put just a, a piece of paper on the back just so that it wasn't plain. And this is my little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Key. And you'll see what that means in a minute, also how I use that in just a sec. So like I said, I was using discs and the reason I did that is because it is now buildable. So I can take sheets out and put sheets in whenever I like. So for example, if I, if a friend of mine wanted to, to borrow a stamp set or whatever, I could just pull this out and she wasn't sure maybe if it was going to be the right size or whatever, rather than sending her the stamp set straight away or whatever, I'm just going to take that out and give that to her. Or if I want to remember to do a particular project with a certain stamp set, I can have this out and on my desk. So it keeps reminding me, you need to do this, you need to do this. So, so simple to pull out and then obviously very easy to build upon. The key thing is then how, which one is a stamp, which one is a stamp and die? Or which one do I have the stamp and die? So not, most of the time, I'm one of these weird people that can't buy the stamps without the dies. I just, I need to have both. So if it's got a little red dot next to the header, which I just print out on my label maker, which you're gonna see in action in a minute anyway. If it's got a red dot, it's the stamp and die set. So I know I have the matching dies to go with this. If it's just a blue dot, or a purple dot, I might need to find a purple dot. You can see here I have mostly, there we go, mostly stamps and dies. If I've just got just a blue dot or a purple dot, it's just, I've just got the stamp. Now the only thing I still need to add into this is my standalone dies. And that's because I don't have too many, but if you saw my haul the other week, you'll know I bought a few. So I'm debating putting them in here as well, like having them cut out and stuck down. This is really simple and you're gonna see from start to finish in just a sec how I do this. So let's start with actually doing the catalog. So I have a pile of A5 cardstock. This is just the, I think it's Quill, 
think it's quill cardstock that you buy from Officeworks. And because I'm lazy or clever, I don't quite know if I'm lazy or clever, I get them to cut it for me. So I take a packet of the, I think it's 100 sheets in the pack, I'll link it down below anyway, and I get them to cut it. Just cut it in half. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna do a hell of a lot better job than I am. And it's only gonna cost me an extra $2, uh, sometimes it's $4, depends on the person running it. Because what they'll do is they charge you, I think it's a dollar per cut, and they sometimes have to pull this into different groups. I think last time it was only two, because it only took two cuts to get it through. They just halved and then went chop. You don't have to do that. If you don't want to, don't. Bring it home and do it yourself. It's not hard, um, but I just found it a bit simpler this time, and because I knew I was gonna be doing a lot to get these, it just seemed easier. So these are cut to A5, which in case you don't know, is 21 centimeters high by 14 centimeters, 14.7 centimeters wide. Then what I do is I come in with a lead pencil, which I thought I had on my desk, but I did not. And I mark these at my intervals to stamp out, my, to cut the, the hole. So I mark it at three and a half, no, 3.5, 7, 10.5, 14, and 17.5. And then, because I'm a cheater, I'll put these a couple of them together so I can punch a couple at once. Then I grab my We Are Memory Keepers disc power punch. This will go through, I think I've tried six or seven pieces of cardboard at a time. You can push it a bit further than that. It's got a lot of oomph to this, um, but I sort of find, what have I got here? One, two, three, four. I'll go to five, but I reckon you could do maybe seven. I don't want to try in case I break them. And I, I don't like, not break them, waste them. I don't like wasting my cardstock, even if it is the not expensive kind. So all I do is I line this up. There's a little line on the top here. I just line that up in here. Fold it down. Actually, this is just a, I should have done this. I have it a little higher up. The mark a little higher up. Because that way you can see it. I don't know why I forgot that when I did that. So I've got the little mark thing. Line it up, make sure it's straight, there's a little guide here, and punch. And you just do that the whole way through. That's gone through so easy, it's like butter. I reckon I could put another three or four cardstocks in there with no problem. So just hold it as you punch, make sure it's straight. actual stamp itself so I grab the stamp and I take it out of its packaging a lot of people like to keep them in their packaging I completely understand that if you're one of those people just leave it in the packet and just put it in there but I like to have just the white bit of cardstock when I'm storing these so I grab my label maker in this is the Dymo what's it called I do know what it's called I don't know, it's a Dymo Letra tag. I'll link it down below. It's just at Officeworks. I think it cost me 20 bucks and I use it for everything. And I have the paper tape. You can get plastic. I prefer the look of the paper. It doesn't look as shiny on here. So then in big, or well, in capital letters, I write out lawn form and I make that format as a large one and I print it. Simple. Nothing complicated with this bit. Then I do clear, okay. Then you write down or you write in the name of the stamp set. So this is Magic Messages. Just in small, not only like in capitals and, and little letters, I don't know what they're called, uncapitalized letters. And I make that a medium size. So it's just a bit smaller. And then I print two copies of this one. And you'll see why in a second. This is me trying to be, you can obviously do one at a time. This is me trying to be efficient as I'm doing this. So print one, I reckon I've just run out of tape. <laughs> Thankfully it finished doing it before we got there. I always keep spare on hand anyway, so thank goodness. I don't know why that one's blue and that one's black, but anyway, it does the same job. And then I just go print again, and it'll print me the second one. Just 
just having a fear that maybe I just told you the wrong thing. I did. So I do one, one in the small size, sorry, and I do one in the large size, but with the big and little letters. Apologies. Oh, even I make boo-boos. In fact, boo-boos are my existence. All right. So then we're going to grab my misty tool. I find the misty is easier. If you don't have a misty, you can use a stamp positioning tool and it will be fine. But I use the misty because it makes life a little bit easier for me. I put that in the middle so it's not quite right up against the edge. And then I put my magnets in. Undo the stamp set. Also reveal the back of the stamp. Leave them on. Don't even worry about taking these off. There is no point. It is so much easier to just leave them on their backing. And this was where, this is again Simone's idea. I was worried this was going to, it was going to take me so long because I had to take them off and take them on and put them on put them on. It was just too much work. She goes, why don't you just leave them on there? I was like, oh, duh. So leave them on there. I've just got a little bit of blue tack there just to pick it up because I find I can't quite make it work otherwise. Let's move those up there. Then I'm going to grab a bit of tape. Depending on what you've got on hand, any kind of tape will do. I prefer to use masking tape because I think it keeps it stuck down a little bit more and I can use this bit of tape over and over and over again and it'll be fine. Once that one's stuck down, I just take off the blue tack and I'll use that over and over and over again. And then I just grab a bit of washi tape, this just happens to be sitting on my desk, and that holds the bottom bit down. Grab your ink. Her up. Any kind of ink is fine here. If you want to like really make this look as good as possible, use like your Versamark ink. Uh, yeah, no, Versafine ink, sorry. Your Onyx Black, because that'll give you the crispest lines. You're not going to be colouring these in, so you don't have to worry about it. I like to use my Hero Arts because that's what I'll stamp in anyway. Push those down. If you don't get the best impression in the world, number one, first time you ever used them so you primer your stamps as a extra but you can just stamp it again if it's in the misty or if it's like this and it's maybe just a little bit light not worried it's only going in the catalog so it's not a big deal if it's not 100% perfect and I grab off grab my cloth this is just a microfiber cloth this is how I clean all my stamps I just wipe them off take off your bit of washi tape put it on the side of your desk because I'm not done I've got plenty to do same thing with the masking tape. All I do is try and make sure it doesn't roll up because then you kind of can lose the ability to use it. And put that up there for a sec. There's our catalogue page, almost done. So we just need to put the label on the top. This is a personal preference thing as well. You don't have to do this. I don't like the extra little bit of um, tape on the edge. It just annoys me, so I tend to clip it off. Paper. that at the top and then you just need to put the dot to code it so this one these are my luscious labels um, little dots I love I love Denise's dots she does such a great job with the dots uh, they are clear so they will pop up basically on anything um, but you can do them in a bunch of different colors you don't have to get red you can get whatever you like I just liked the red dot up dot next to the title for stamp and die we come into our catalogue find M which of course happens to be right at the back uh, mermaid magic so this goes in the front flip her in done would that take me 10 minutes not even so easy just a side note just something I thought of while I was doing that um, if I have two like little ones so for example, I've got the Elfie Selfie flip flop there. What I do is if they're close in, um, what's the word, close alphabetically, and I think I, I don't know if they're gonna do a, 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 a second one or a flip flop or anything, I put them together. So for this one, I did a little sparkle and big acorn. It's not far away, so it's not like it's a big deal. 
Um, but if they did ever make like a little sparkle flip flop, I'll just redo this page. Like it's not going to take long, um, and I haven't wasted much, so I think that's fine. All right, so now I've got it stamped out and catalogued. I do find sometimes, and someone tell who does discs a lot, just tell me if this is okay. Sometimes it just feels a little hard to move those, but I think maybe I just need to put some powder or something on there so they float. But anyway, when it comes to storing them, storing them comes down to a few different things. I'm just gonna move some things off here. Depends on the size of your stamp set, depends on if you wanna store them vertically or horizontally. I store mine horizontally because I have them living in my drawers. So my slimline, all my big six by eight stamp sets live in these big pockets. These are the Avery L Extra Large Stamp and Die Storage Pockets. I get them from either Dawn Lewis or Scrap Dragon, depending on who has them in stock. The small ones, oh, and sorry, and then I base them on a piece of cardstock, which I will do the exact same way either way. But this one is measured at 23.5 by 16.5, and I just cut that with my paper trimmer. The small ones, so the one we're going to put magic messages in is in the large stamp and die pockets, again by Avery L, again get them from Dawn or Scrap Dragon. And these ones I put on a piece of cardstock that is 18.4 centimetres by 13.5. So they're just a little bit smaller than your A4, uh, A5. So that's a size comparison for you. And that's so they sit in the pocket fine. So once we've got bit of cardboard cut. I have a bunch pre-cut. Again, I just have cutting days where I'll just sit here and just cut cardstock all day. Grab my title and my little magic messages here. Cut off the extra. And then this is the part that comes down to whether you want to store these horizontally or vertically. If you store them horizontally, like I do, I put the title in the top left hand corner. In fact, they were vertical, I put them in the top left hand corner as well. But obviously that just the corner in question depends on which way you're storing them. I am a little bit anal when it comes to making them straight. I don't like my labels to be wonky. I don't mind so much in my catalogue, I don't know why. Don't have so much of a worry, but in my drawers I need these to be as straight as possible. So I put them in straight as possible. Grab one of the little pockets. I might need to buy some more again. Close the little edge, cardboard in, stamp in, you've got your storage done. If you keep the dies with it, which I do, where are my dies? Here somewhere. Here we go. I keep these on a magnetic sheet. Now, I now buy my magnetic sheets from Officeworks. I used to buy them off Amazon and I found that they... A, we're out of stock a lot, but B, the quality of them wasn't as good. The first set I got, I got a set of the, what are they called, like vent covers, um, and the first set I got were really good. They were really great quality, and they felt really strong. Like These are excess bits that I have. This is my sort of pile of excess, so depending on if I have a, a particular stamp set, I might sort of use, oh, sorry, die set. I might use a bit of scrap, otherwise I go to the, the full sheets, which I'll show you in a sec. But I think the first ones I had were maybe these ones, and like they feel really, really sturdy. Whereas I have these ones, which were the second lot that came. They're so floppy, they just don't feel sturdy. They still keep everything on here. Like if I put that on, ooh. Like it sticks, it's not an issue of it falling apart but it just feels floppy so I just like to use something a bit more sturdy so this is what I mean with your small die sets sometimes you don't need the full bit like a full big bit of magnet you just need a tinsy little bit and that's why I check my scraps first once the scraps are done that's when we move into cutting out some of the magnetic sheets so to show you the magnetic sheets I buy them they're single it kind of annoys me, and it's not the cheapest option. This is, I think, $6 or something like that for one bit. I don't love the price on it. I know I can get it cheaper from other places, but this is where I know I can always get it. If you have a place you know you can get magnetic sheets on a regular basis, please let me know. Please let me know. All right, we're going to finish this off really quick. So once I've got them here and I want to put it down on this bit of magnet, I'm just going to cut them apart 
You don't have to cut them apart at the start, but I find that I like them to be ready to use when I'm ready to use it. So I just grab a pair of wire snips. I think Ryan bought these off Amazon and I will link them down below. I like to cut off all of the little pokey bits so that I don't stab myself while I'm using them. You should wear safety glasses while you do this as well. So you don't get little bits of metal flying up in your eye. I feel like I wear glasses anyway, so they kind of protect my eye, but I'm sure I'm wrong. These are really easy to do. You sort of look at it sometimes and you go, I don't know how you would ever bend these apart like that. I don't know how you get the middle out, but anyway. So I'm just gonna really quickly finish these and then we'll get to the last bit. Oh, one more quick little thing. When you are cutting apart bits like this, just make sure you hold on to the bits that you're cutting apart. That sounds really obvious, but I have often, <laughs> so I've been sort of holding this here. So I've snipped here and then snipped here. And this little bit's just gone flying and then you gotta go and find it. Always try and hold on to the two bits, or three bits, depending on how you're doing it, just so that they don't end up in some weird place in your room. Okay, all on there. Now this next part, I, do, I don't do this. I'm gonna tell you about it, but I don't do it. Um, if you wanted to make sure that you're, you've always got all your die bits on, like for each stamp set, I know Simone does. She gets a, whether it's a white gel pen or a white um, chalk pen or a permanent pen, something like that. Um, and she traces around the edges of all of the dies so that they, you, you'll know at a glance if they're not there. So for example, this is just a bit that I probably won't ever use. Um, chalk pen, chalk pen. I know I have a chalk pen. I just don't know where I've put it. <laughs> the irony. White gel pen works. So I would grab the little part one here. Just trace around the outside. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. It's just there to guide you. There we go. And then leave that off to the side to dry for a little while. But then you have you'd have a bunch there. So you'd know at a glance that something was missing and you could try and go and find it. I don't do that because I tend to put them straight back onto their magnetic sheet or I keep a little bit of magnet at the top or a magnet. I tend to use my ones from my um, station at the moment. I leave them in the top corner of my glass mat and that way I just stick all the dies back on there so they don't go far. So you've got the little die set goes in the back and you are done. You are done. So right in that half an hour process. Obviously it took longer because I was talking to you guys, but I'd be able to do it a little bit faster if it was just me on my own. I've catalogued, organized, and stored my stamp. All I need to do now is put it away. Simple as that. I also now know where it's going. It's going to go in between Love Your Bunches and Mermaid For You in my thing because I've already done it. I love these little books. They seriously have been the, the best if not the best, one of the best um, things that have come into my stand, my craft room in the last couple of months. Thank you again so much to Simone for encouraging me to do it. I was really on the fence, but so worth it. Love it. I'm now going to go and spend the next 15, 20, 30 minutes doing the rest of these. Um, just a little side note, just for while I'm thinking of it. If I've just got a die, there's not a stamp that goes with it. Uh, what have I got? I can grab it a quick... So like all of this is a bad example, but like all of is, I have the the numbers and the letters, so I would have them together. What have I got? That's just a die. Just a die. Okay, here we go. So this is the peekaboo backdrop that lives on its own. There's nothing with it. It's just peekaboo. But if I got something else that was kind of like a, um, I'm trying to think of something. I can't even think of something. But something that was like a, just a die on its own that went with it, like that stood by itself. I just put them together. So like my grassy backgrounds I have on with, I think it's a scripty hello, something like that. Whatever's closest. I'll always be able to find it, but I can always leave notes. That was something else I thought of after the fact. It would be really cool to be able to leave ideas on the back of here, whether you write them in by, by like straight on the back with pencil or by pen, or if you just have an idea and you want to stick it on there, this would be a really great place to also keep ideas. So it becomes a organizational tool, but it also becomes an inspirational tool, which I think is kind of cool. 
yeah, just ideas that have come to me while I've been doing this. So that is it. Oh, now is there anything I haven't shown you? So just to run back over things, I got this one from Washi Gang, which I also got my little discs from Washi Gang. I just grabbed one of the um, mega packs of discs. These are just plastic ones. I don't really think it matters if you use plastic or metal or wood or whatever you want to use, but just whichever disc you're happy with. The cardstock is from Officeworks. It's cheap. It's not complicated. Nothing fancy about it. If you didn't want to use cardstock, if you just wanted to use paper, that would work too. The only reason I went for cardstock instead of paper was because I wanted it to not see through. The other thing, I'm trying to get to all the questions that I think you guys are going to ask and put them all now. Um, the other thing that I didn't, I did deliberately was I deliberately only used one side. The ideas thing came later, that was definitely not a first thought, but I did deliberate putting them back to back, but then I thought I, when I add things in, that's then going to not quite work. If you didn't want to have such big ones, that would obviously be a great space saver, but I knew I wanted to have them like this so I could keep them in as close to alphabetical order as I could personal preference if you want to do them on both sides these don't bleed through you can see that's perfect do them both sided if you wanted to I'm going to stop talking now thank you guys so much for watching everything is listed down below so you can check out all of my supplies if you do have any questions please let me know you can find me here of course or on any of my socials if you did enjoy this one please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching hope you have an absolutely awesome 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 rest of your day and I will catch you again in my next video sending lots of huggles bye